also worked with him. And I had, he, he was the one that,
Father, we thank you for just Thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, that we can thank you for Thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Church said amen and amen. That's a good place right there to give God praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, uh, I, I just want to say uh, that real quick that we, we give uh, honor and, and, and praise and honor and thank the Lord for our pastors uh, that they would entrust me to stand in this place to be a blessing to you. I thank you for showing up today. Amen. Amen. There's angels here, but you're here with the angels. And so I give God praise for that. I thank you for that. Amen. I always honor my wife. Where you at, my queen? I love you. Amen. Amen. Some of you young men who are not married yet, pay attention. That's wisdom. That's Thanksgiving, too. <laughs> That's a benefit, too. <laughs> there she go. Amen. I was just loving on you, that's all. Yeah. Amen. Listen, uh, the title of this message that we're going to sharpen this iron with is the benefit or benefits of Thanksgiving. Amen? Amen. The benefits of Thanksgiving. I want to take you back in a little history lesson here. I just want to start there. Just, just listen, okay? Thanksgiving proclamations were made mostly by church leaders. Because we're talking about Thanksgiving. And the benefits. Amen? Amen? In New England up until 1682, and then by both state and church leaders until after the American Revolution. During the Revolution period, political influences affected the assurance of Thanksgiving proclamations. <laughs> Various proclamations were made by royal governors John Hancock, General George Washington and the Continental Congress, each giving thanks to God, amen? amen, for events favorable to their causes. As President of the United States, George Washington proclaimed the first nationwide Thanksgiving celebration in America, marking November 26, 1789, a day of public Thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts, somebody say grateful hearts, for many and signaling favors of Almighty God. So back then, back in the day, if you would, they were thanking God for what they had, the benefits that the Lord had blessed them with at that time. Amen? On October 3rd, 1863, President Lincoln issued a proclamation of Thanksgiving for the last Thursday of November. He called upon, and I quote, my fellow citizens in every part of the United States and also those who are at sea and those who are sojourning in foreign lands to set apart and observe a day of Thanksgiving and praise. Think about that. Thanksgiving and praise. One more history lesson. President John F. Kennedy issued a proclamation. The proclamation number was 3560 on November 5th, 1963, stating, and I quote, over three centuries ago, our forefathers in Virginia and in Massachusetts, far from home, in a lonely wilderness, set aside a time of Thanksgiving. On the appointed day, they gave reverent thanks. Somebody say reverent. Reverent. Does anybody know what that means? Does anybody know what that means? What does it mean? Honor. Y'all got that? Honor. Honor. Thanks for their safety. Thank you, brother. For the health of their children for their safety, for the fertility of their fields, for the love which bound them, which bound them together, and for the faith which united them with their God. Amen. Amen. That was a proclamation from, from him, from John S. Kennedy. We have benefits of Thanksgiving sometimes, I believe we don't realize that we have. But 
within those benefits, we also have weapons. Amen. Okay. Some of them were called off. One was said, praise. Amen? That's a benefit. That's a weapon. Y'all with me? Come on. Turn with me to Matthew 28. And we're going to start at verse 18 and we're going to finish with 19. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. Somebody say, blessed. Blessed. With kingdom, with kingdom authority. authority. Did you know that was a benefit? Yes, it is. Do you know you're supposed to thanks, thank him and have thanksgiving to have kingdom authority? Hello? Yes, sir. Y'all out there? Yes, sir. Matthew 28. Starting at verse 18. I'm going to finish up with 19. You're welcome. And it reads, Jesus came up and said to them, all authority, all power, absolute. Somebody say absolute. Absolutely, absolutely positive. Say it. Absolutely. In heaven and on earth has been given to me. This is what Jesus said about him. But then he told his disciples, who are his disciples? Me. Say it again. Me. Me. Say it one more time. Me. Okay. Back then he said his disciples, but that also hits us. That's why I made that question. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Help the people to learn of me, believe in me, and obey my words. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want you to listen again. I'm going to share something with you. This is about us. Somebody says it's about me. It's who I am. It's who I have. I'm, I have thanksgiving for the benefits. Amen? Jesus came to reveal his kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. It is an invisible spiritual kingdom, and yet we can see our manifestations of this realm while living in the earth. You agree? Okay. When you, us, when you invite Jesus into your life, you become a citizen of the kingdom and you have full access to its benefits. Come on now. Can I, can I read that again? Yeah, that's good stuff. When you invite Jesus into your life, you become a citizen of the kingdom and you have full access to its benefits. Benefits. Yeah, buddy. Come on. In fact, the Bible teaches that you become an ambassador. Yes, sir. Yes, Take neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm an ambassador. Hey, I'm an ambassador. Ooh, I can feel the anointing. Representing the government of the nation they are from. Okay. In the nation to which they are sent. They are governed by the laws of the land they are from and not by the laws of the nation they are residing in. Did y'all get that? Oh, yeah. Listen to this. Amen. Talking about you, talking about us. Say, I'm talking about me. Talking about me. You are living in the earth, representing the kingdom of heaven. You are God's ambassador, amen. Yes, I am. And you are governed by his royal laws of love. Yes, I am. As his ambassador, yes, I am. you have Christ's authority to reach the world. Yes, I am. You live in with his love, light, and truth. Yeah. Talk about you. Talk about us. Talk about me. Jesus Christ commissioned his disciples with authority to preach the good news of the kingdom and heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, and free the oppressed, which you can find that in Matthew 10 and 1. We won't go there right now. 7 and 8. Mark 16, 15 through 17. We won't go there right now. There are all expressions of his love, but you can write those down. Get the CD. Tell your neighbor, say, get the CD. More about us. You are also commissioned with his authority to represent him in the earth. I get no amens right there. You are also commissioned with his authority. Say, authority. I have his authority. Do you have any Christians in the house? Yeah, yeah. 
Do we have any Christians? So that means you got the authority, right? To represent him in the earth. Jesus taught that those who believe, say, I believe. I believe. Are you a believer? Would do the same works. He did the even greater, which is again John 14, 12. This is how the world will become to know him. Amen? Amen. You have been given full access into this glorious kingdom. Yeah. Hello? Come on. I'm going to start right there. Father, I thank you. Thank you. I thank you for that benefit. Yes. Yeah. To have full access. Full access. Full access. Full. Full access. Into your glorious kingdom. Come on now. And you have been given authority. Say authority. Authority. Through Christ to bring the manifestation of his kingdom into the earth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sounds like a benefit, amen. Come on. <laughs> and we thank him for that. Yes. Hallelujah. You rule. Say, I rule. I rule. And reign. I reign. With him. With him. Amen. Yeah. And your life makes a difference. Tell your neighbor, say, your life, your life. makes a difference. Yeah. Tell them again. They need your to hear. Life. Your life makes a difference. Yeah. Tell them one more time. Your life makes a difference. Yeah. Then give God praise right there. Yeah. You have authority. Say, I have authority. I have authority. Ah, over the works of the enemy. Over the works of the enemy. Luke 10, 19. Luke 10, 19. Luke 10, 19. Remember that. You have authority to work miracles on Christ's behalf. Yes. You are not just a mere human being. Hello. All right, come on. You are a heavenly being. Yes. Tell you never said, I'm a heavenly being. I'm a heavenly being. I'm an ambassador for Christ. Ambassador for Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. You are a heavenly being in the earth. You are a supernatural being. Say it. I am a supernatural being. Representing Christ. Christ. His kingdom and his righteousness. Yeah. Sounds like benefits to me. Yeah. And what do we do? We give him thanks. Okay. Right there. Yeah. Hallelujah. into your realm of influence and spread the wonderful news of his love and manifest his kingdom, amen, glory, you have been granted authority to do so. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what you gonna do about that? How's that working for you? Amen? We gonna run. We gonna run like the horses. <laughs> Does that excite you? That excites me. See, we have to understand that the more that we get into the word, the more that we spend time with him, the more that we pray. Somebody say pray. You know, the enemy, he always fights you in prayer. He don't want you to pray. Because that's talking to the talk, mm, that's talking to the Lord. That's in his face. You in his face. You have his ear. He's listening to you. That's why, hey, we were created for that. Amen. Yeah. Okay, now I want you to write. Those who have notes, I got something for you to write. Six principles to live by. Uh, six principles to live by to quickly, somebody say quickly. Quickly. Receive God's benefits. Receive God's benefits. Six principles to live by to quickly receive God's benefits. You ready? Real simple stuff here. You know, we have a God that's so practical. He's so down to earth. Everybody can understand. The kids can understand. Amen? Amen. Okay, here we go. One, get to know God okay. personally and give him thanks. Hello? Get to know God personally and give him thanks. Two, Give thanks while learning his commands and discovering what he wants you to do. Everybody has a job to do for the Lord. 
He put us here because he has something for us to do. Now, the only way we're going to figure that out is we got to learn who he is. We got to take time. And we got to learn his word, which is his commands. Amen? Amen. That's right, baby. I love you. Come here. Amen, girl. <laughs> she said, I'll tell you, man, what she said. <laughs> That's a little evangelist right there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pray for you. Amen. Number three, worship God with thanksgiving and a perfect heart. Amen. <laughs> we agree. Worship God with a thanksgiving and a perfect heart. Number four, serve God with gladness and thank him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Yeah. You should be happy, man, Lord, to on. serve the Lord. Don't you know it's yeah. a privilege? Come on. Come Some on. people don't get that. They don't privilege. get that privilege. They don't even understand. They have no inkling to what that means. Okay. Come on. You should be totally excited about the things of God, especially right now. With all the nonsense and the craziness that's going on in this world, you can't depend on the president and his captain. Everybody get on fire. Going to jail. So how are we going to deal with them except to pray for them? That's all we can do for the White House is pray. And thank God whoever it is that he wants in there for this next term. We have no idea what's going to happen in the next two years. We have no idea. That's why we should be praying and giving him thanks. And thanking him for giving us direction and guidance and understanding and wisdom and knowledge on how to do what we need to do at this time in our life. Hey, we got babies in the house. We have babies. Man, we got to be praying for them. Y'all all right? Yeah. Hallelujah. What I stop at? Four? Number five. Y'all ready, ready for five? Before again. Before again. Serve God with gladness and thank him with a willing mind. The mind of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all got that, right? Yes, sir. Number five, be faithful, be thankful. Be faithful, be thankful. Be faithful, be thankful. Right? Yes, sir. Hmm. Six, don't become discouraged. Trust. And thank him for the victory. Don't become discouraged. Somebody say trust. And thank him for the victory. That means in the midst of the storm and the hell that the enemy wants to raise on you, thank him in the name of Jesus. Because that confuses the enemy. He has no idea. He just, when he think he got you, he ain't got you. I know that's bad grammar, but y'all understand what I'm saying anyhow. Even you viewers out there, y'all know where I'm coming from. Amen, viewers. Hallelujah. We must thank him in the midst of the, in the, midst of the, the battle. Amen. We got to do that. Everybody got their own personal battle. Would you agree? My battle ain't your battle. Your battle ain't their battle. Yes. But we got one. Right. Oh, by the way, in case you didn't know, you in the battle anyway. Right. When you were born you were out your mama's womb, if I could go there, the battle became yours. You just in this now, you have parents. Talk to some of y'all young folk now. You have parents that help fight your battle, but there's going to come a time where every tongue got to sit in their bottom. Or every bottom. Come on. Uh, Every tongue will confess. Every tongue. Every knee shall bow. Gotta sit on their own body. Did I say it right? <laughs> That's 
mama, huh? Back in the day. That's right. Meaning, hey man, you gonna have to, you gonna have to take flight and wings. You gonna have to, you gonna have to do it for yourself. Okay. Nike, you just gonna have to do it. Have to do it. See, because you gonna become responsible as well. Don't okay. you young folk out there? It's gonna happen. You know, y'all, you can't be shy in, in this time. I mean, it's all good. We, hey, I was young too. I'm still young. Let me just tell you, I'm still young. Amen. 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 <laughs> but when I was a little younger. You know, I had to come to realization of, hey, Jesus Christ, one, is real. Jesus Christ is the head of my life, too. And then I had to shut down on all the foolishness, you know, because that wasn't going to do anything for me. I talk to you young people, because you are just a part of this as us adults. Amen? Amen. Okay, I want you to turn to subscription. I'm going to give you some, some, some more iron. Turn with me to 1 Chronicles 28. Chronicles 28. This one I read from the King James Version. First Chronicles 28, 9. Okay. First Chronicles 28, 9. King James Version. And it reads, And thou, Solomon, my son, know that the God of thy father and serve him with a perfect heart and a will in mind. We just talked about that. Amen? For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the imaginations of the thoughts. <laughs> so there is no escape. He know you. He know what you're thinking. It says if you seek him, he will be found of thee. You can reach him. He's there for you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. This is what he was saying to Solomon. This is what David was saying to Solomon. Somebody say, no benefits. No benefits. If you don't do it right, no benefits. Amen? Amen. Let's keep pushing. Uh, 2 Chronicles 16, 9. I'm going to the expanded Bible. Second Chronicles 69, expanded by when it reads, the Lord searches, the eyes of the Lord search all throughout the earth for people who have given themselves completely to him. Do we have anybody in the room who have given themselves completely to him? Yes. Yes. Amen. Whose hearts are completely his committed to him. He wants to strengthen them. That's a benefit in case you didn't know. Amen? Then he says, Asa, you did a foolish thing so from now on you have wars. Or will have wars. So Asa was a king. And he was ruling over the Israelites. And he was doing good, and then he got off. And because he got off, this is what took place. The, the wars were coming. And this is something that his son Jehoshaphat and Aaron. But Jehoshaphat loved the Lord. His first 10 years that he reigned, I think it was 35 years that he reigned totally. But his first 10 years, he did just the opposite of what his father did, and God was with him. That song, uh, um, the Lord fight my battles. What's that? How's that go? Huh? Yeah, yeah. How's that go? This is how I fight my battle. That one. The Lord was fighting Jehoshaphat's battle. We're going to get into that later. Okay. Can I go deeper? Can I go deeper? The true story of Thanksgiving. Say that. The true story, the true story of Thanksgiving. Okay, so I just need you to listen. Okay. One, created for Thanksgiving. First, God created humanity for gratitude. Amen? Gratitude is Thanksgiving. You exist to appreciate God, in case you didn't know. Amen? He created you to honor him by giving him thanks. Amen? Amen. 
appreciating both who God is and his actions for us in creating us and sustaining our lives is fundamental to proper human life in God's created world. Y'all with me? Okay, talking about Paul now. As he describes in Romans 1, what's gone wrong with the world? The Apostle Paul gives us a glimpse through the word of the place of appreciation in the order. So Romans 1, 21, it talks about, although they knew God, and I'm reading the scripture, although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were dark. That's Romans 1, 21, you can write that down. Romans chapter 1, verse 21. That was an uh, English Standard Version. I'm going to read that one. What's the same one? Okay. Let me say this to you. Part of what the first man and woman were created to do was honor God. Amen? You agree? Yeah, amen. By being thankful. You agree with that? Yeah. And part of what we exist is to honor God by being thankful and thus the numerous biblical commands enjoining gratitude. We are to be thankful to the Lord in all things. His word says in all things give thanks, does it not? Yeah. And so we have to be thankful. Remember, being thankful is a benefit also to us. Yeah. Okay? Yes, I think yes. that's where some of us, we, me included, get mixed up. <laughs> See, we are so uh, used to the things that we have, the benefits that we have, and sometimes we forget the little things and how important they are. Amen? Amen. Okay, two. Falling from Thanksgiving. Say it. Falling from Thanksgiving. Okay. Satan, he wanted more. More power, more glory, ultimately in his essence. Satan is an ingrate. Let me say it again. He's an ingrate. An ingrate. Cho. And he sinks his venom into the hearts of Eden. Satan's sin becomes the first of all humanity. The sin of ingratitude. Ingratitude. Not gratitude, but ingratitude. He wasn't thankful. Amen? Amen. Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve are simply painful, ungrateful for what God gave them. Because they got caught up in the enemy. Nobody stopped them. Or they didn't stop themselves. <coughs> the gratitude that God had blessed them with. They wanted more. The, 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 the apple, however, the enemy wanted to use that to use that to trick them. They should have been more uh, God conscious, but they weren't. So, of course, God looked at them as ungrateful. You ain't grateful. I mean, just like if we as children and he gives us something that we abuse. I think we can relate to that, amen? Yeah. Especially with the kids. Christmas comes, and they be blessed with whatever it is that was blessed with, and then you find them abusing it. Hello? First thing you want to do is snatch it from them. Hello? Because that's exactly what the Lord did for them. Kicked them out. Snatched it from them quickly. It was ungrateful. They didn't give thanks for what they already had. Amen. Our fault was, has always been, and always will be that we aren't satisfied in God and what he gives. Now that's the world I'm talking about. Because we satisfy in him because he blesses us with good things. Amen? Amen. We hunger for something else, something other. That's the world. Only with divine redemption, we are able to grow toward a balance that Christians are thankful for all God's gifts, especially his eternal gifts. Amen? Yeah. And especially for surpassing value of knowing his son. Turn to Philippians chapter 3. You can look at uh, verse 8. I read for the English Standard Version on this one. 
Philippians chapter 3, verse 8. And it reads, Indeed, I count everything as lost because of the surprising worth of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. For his sake I have suffered the loss of things and count them as rubbish in order that I might gain Christ. So everything else don't even matter. I don't care how much stuff we have, we ain't taking that stuff with us. Remember, we're ambassadors, amen? And our, 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 our home is, our residence is in heaven, amen? We are passing through the earth. The word talks about our life is a vapor. Here today, gone tomorrow. We don't know his timing. Amen. Amen. So we have to do what he's calling us to do. Amen? Amen. And to be productive. Because he's given us the tools, the benefits to do it. Somebody say together. together. Somebody say one accord. one accord. The Lord will not let me leave that alone. I, I, it'll be 10 years since we've been here. And he keeps bringing that to me. Every time I step to this platform to share God's word. And I believe it's because of what's going on today and why the enemy tries to sift us as wheat. But when we come together, there's power in numbers. Yes, it is. We can move mountains. Yep. We know we all bad by ourselves. You know, we street or hood or, or whatever. You know, we, we, we came from the, the rough side of the mountain, meaning, you know, we knew how to throw up our dukes. That's all I'm saying. We knew how to fight. Everybody in here probably knew how to fight now. You know, I think recreation was fighting back in the day when we were growing up. That was that was the sport. Let's fight. Amen. Some of y'all laughing because y'all know I'm telling the truth. <laughs> and it wasn't about who was the baddest. That one didn't, uh, uh, Yeah, you know too. <laughs> she back there laughing. Rebecca. You fighting right along with it, wasn't you? Amen. So God created that fight in us from the very, very beginning. So we have to take that fight and come together and go fight the enemy. Give God praise right there. Hallelujah. Give him thanks. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, I'm moving. I'm moving. Number three, somebody say redeemed by thanksgiving. Redeemed by thanksgiving. God himself in the person of his son entered into our thankless world. Think about that. Lived in flawless appreciation of his father. He was thankful and died on our behalf for our chronic, somebody say chronic, chronic. Ingratitude. ingratitude. Chronic means this man, you got some issues. It ain't bad, it's really bad. But then again, when we check and we walk outside the door, we turn our TV on, it's chronic. You can't watch a show without seeing two guys and two girls smacking on each other. I call that chronic. That's an abomination. And the cold thing about it is our kids are looking at this stuff. And then what happens when we ain't around and they watching these so-called popular shows and this crap is going on? It is crap. I'm going to say it again. It's crap. Amen. That's why, again, I'm going to go here again. Prayer is so important. That's like, mm, it is so cool. Man, we got to come together. We gotta pray. I look at these babies around here. We gotta pray. We gotta pray, y'all. Taylor said we gotta pray. Gotta pray. Gotta pray. Hey, son, look at the key. It is Jesus, say it is Jesus. It is Jesus. The God man who has manifested the perfect life of thankfulness. Amen. So let's move. Let's go to Matthew 25. And Luke 
10 is also pretty much the same scripture. So Matthew 11, 25 and, and Luke 10, 21, it basically says the same thing. And what it says, it says, I thank my Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understand and create and reveal them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's push. John 11, 41. Let's go there. Talking about Jesus right now. <clears throat> John 11, 41 says, they took away the stone and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And then Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. But what did he do first? Give him thanks. Give him thanks. And the benefit was the supernatural working power of the Lord working through to raise that man up. That's a benefit. Amen. Let's keep pushing. Matthew 15, 36 and also Mark 8, 6, they both talk about Jesus. Took the seven loaves of fish and having given thanks he broke them and gave them to his disciples. So let's, let's, let's look at this for a second. Jesus is thanking the Lord that God is moving. I said God is moving. Yep. There's some humility there. Amen? Amen? Humility is everything. That's what got, uh, 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 well that didn't, but because he lost that, that's what got uh, the enemy kicked out of hell. Because he lost his humility. Humility. Amen. He lost it. Think about it. My grandson at four years old was saying, sit down and be humble. But the first time we heard that, all we could do was laugh. But it was it was there was an anointing in that. Okay, let's move. Acts 27, 35. <clears throat> and I just have a little caption here in that it says, took bread and giving thanks to God in the presence of all, he broke it. So now let's talk about that for a minute. In the presence of all. So, when we're in the presence of people, we can't be shy. We can't be like intimidated. We can't act like we don't know what's going on. We have to be bold as lions, but yet harmless. Amen? There's, 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 a, there's a benefit in that. Because the Lord said, hey, if, if, you, if you don't receive me before man, I will receive you to my father. Is that what he said? Did he say that? So, so when you think about that, presence is everything. There's benefits in the presence. Now you gotta look deep. You, you, gotta, you gotta hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. In the presence of people, my manifestation my, my supernatural favor on your life, people will see. They will, they, they, they will, 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 you might be the only Jesus on that now. they see. Come on now. Come on. Because the enemy is taking people out of here quick. Yep. Hell enlarges itself every day to receive more and more people into hell. And so if he wants to put his supernatural anointing on your life, you can't be shy with it. It's a weapon. I tell you what, when you at work, if you those who work, 
and then he's beating you all upside your head through somebody. What you gonna do? You gonna burn that thing up? You gonna pray? And you gonna be bold about it? And you gonna tell the enemy, hey, look, you ain't getting no ground here. I take this. This ground belongs to me. I done told people at work, hey, you know what? I'm praying for you. Pray for you. And they look at me like, huh, what are you talking about? I'm like, I'm serious too. I'm mean, like, I'm serious, dog. You tripping. Don't come in my space with bringing this negativity to me. I ain't trying to hear it. I'm serious. If I'm going to be hanging out for 10, 10 hours at the gig, the job, the gig job, that's just, well, that's it. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be prosperous. prosperous. I'm going to enjoy the day. I'm going to let this gray hair flow as the Lord see fit, not for somebody else. I'm just keeping it real. It's going to come, but I'm going to let the Lord bring it. Amen. I don't need nobody else bringing no gray hair to me. I'm still a young buck. I told y'all that once before. I got energy. Amen. Amen. God is good. Y'all receive? Oh, yes. Amen. Okay, let me go here. Jesus is not only God himself, but also the quintessentially, I didn't say that word right, but I'm going to spell it because some of y'all scholars might be able to get this. Q-U-I-N-T-E-S-S-E-N-T-I-A-L-L-Y. I'm saying it again. Q-U-I-N. Quintessentially. Let me start. <laughs> I got it now. I thank y'all. See, that's a benefit. I got a benefit. Quintessentially. Is that right? So let me start over. Jesus is not only God himself, but also the quintessentially thankful human. How about that? The God man not only died to forgive our failures in giving God the thanks he's due, but also lived the perfect life of appreciation on our behalf towards his father. Amen? Hallelujah. I got one more. Four. Somebody say free for Thanksgiving. This is important. Christians are thankful for all God's gifts. Amen? You agree? Amen. Especially his eternal, eternal gift. Amen? Amen? Eternally or eternal gift. By faith in Jesus, we are redeemed from ingrained and it's just eternal penalty in hell. Think about that. And we're free to enjoy the pleasure of being doubtful, thankful for God's favor towards us. Amen? So with that being said, let's go to Colossians. Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. Hmm. Colossians chapter 1. Starting at verse 11. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father, amen, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Let's look at Colossians chapter 2, 6 and 7. As you receive Christ, Jesus, the Lord. So walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, 
just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Y'all see the benefits in this? In thanksgiving? Colossians chapter 3, verse 15 through 17. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful that the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. That is a weapon. That is a benefit to us to use as a weapon to the enemy. Now, a lot of us, some of us, don't take advantage of what I just said. Because for whatever reason, the enemy will come in and he will try and shut you down. See, allow me to say this. The reason why the enemy doesn't want you to be a part of praise and worship is because he can't do it. As much as he would want to do it now, if he could, forget about it. It ain't going down. It ain't going to happen. Because he's been banned. He had his shot. When he got kicked out of heaven, you out. No more for you. Okay? You know, lake of fire and everything else, fire and brimstone, that's, that's, that's your praise and worship. Okay? So what does he do? He comes to God's people. Misery loves company. So if I can get as many as I can, I'm going to take them down. Okay. I'm a shortstop. Yep. And here's the crazy part. We allow it. Mm -hmm. yep. When he's giving us the keys. He talked about keys one day. And one of the keys is praise and worship. Think about it. He wants to stop. Even, even the kids, the kids, y'all, y'all, y'all part of this. You are not exempt. He wants to stop you. And he'll do everything he can to do that. So when we have the opportunity when the word says, come in to his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise, shout unto the Lord. Clap your hands, all ye people. Yes. Did you know that was a command? Yeah. He commanded, hey, he created us. I said it earlier, he created us. And that's part of my job to him. And even in that, we get some type of benefit because the benefit becomes, I'm going to talk to my people. I'm going to share with them. I'm going to show you this in the word in a minute. I'm going to talk to my people, I'm going to share with them, and they're going to know what's going on so the enemy cannot sift them as wheat. Hello. As soon as you walk out this place, guess what? The enemy going to try and attack you and steal the word right out of your spirit. Yes, he is. Because he don't like you. In fact, he hates your guts and everything about you. He can't stand. And that's just real. It's nasty like that. That's just real. You got to feel it that way. He'll stomp you. Every chance he get. That's what he'll do to you. And sometimes we let it happen. We do. We cannot allow the enemy in this hour that we're in to cause division and strife in the body of Christ. We can't, we can't allow it. We just can't. God is depending on us to win the souls for Christ. At the end of the day, this whole thing is about souls. We have to be thankful that he gives us the benefits Amen. Amen. The benefits are to win souls for Christ and be happy in doing it and laugh at the enemy while we do it.
and take authority over him while we do. Amen? Amen. The enemy don't like us. He can't stand us. Hallelujah. Hmm. Let's go here. We're going to go here and then I'm going to move into the book, by the way. <laughs> okay, so let's do this. Uh, 2 Chronicles 5.13. Uh, 2 Chronicles 5.15, the Amplified version is what I'm reading. Okay? Because I have a whole lot more here. But, amen. Thank God for studying the Word. Okay, 2 Chronicles 5.13, Amplified version, it says, verse 13, it says, In unison, somebody say unison. Yeah. When the trumpeters and the singers were to make themselves heard with one voice, praising and thanking the Lord. Praising and thanking the Lord. And when they raised their voices accompanied with the trumpets and cymbals and other instruments of music and when they praised say praised the Lord. Say for he is good for his mercy and loving kindness into a forever. Then the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud which is the glory of God. Yeah. Amen. 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 When we become more God conscious of what he wants to do to bless us with the glory because he said he would not have a cigarette. Right? That's what he said. Right? So, so, so what we have to do is we have to do our part. Somebody say, I gotta do my part. I gotta do my part. Okay, let's, let's, let's go, because this is good. Um, that song that was being played uh, that I was trying to say, I, fi I found it in the Word of God. Jehoshaphat must have been singing that song. Amen. Okay, let's go to uh, Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Let's go to uh, uh, chapter 20. Again, we're talking about Thanksgiving and we're talking about the benefits of Thanksgiving. Amen? Amen. We good? Amen. Okay, so I'm going to move around. So let's, let's talk about this. So uh, Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, they were coming to Jehoshaphat and the Israelites to wipe them off the face of the earth. Okay? They got word. Verse 1, it says, And it came, or it happened after this, that the people of Moab with the people of Ammonim and others with them, besides the Amorites, came to battle against Jehoshaphat. They want to beat them up. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, Jesus, <laughs> Jehoshaphat, came and told him, a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in Herzon Tamar, which is in Gideon. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judea. So the first thing he did is he sought the Lord and he had a fast. The babies, everybody was fasting. Amen? So, verse 4, so Judah gathered together to ask help. Somebody say help. help. From the Lord. Lord, I need that benefit, man. And from all the cities of Judea came to seek the Lord. So everybody came together, one accord, fasted, and they sought the Lord. Amen? I'm skipping to verse 14. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benai, the son of Zeru, the son of Matthew, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. And he said, listen, all you of Judah, 
and your inhabitants of Jerusalem. That's the babies and everybody. And you, King Jehoshaphat, thus said the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude of the battle. For the battle is not your, but God's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't your battle. It's his. Check it out. He sees you. Amen. Tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Z. And you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerusalem. You will not need to fight. Why? In this battle. So you gotta picture this. I don't know how many people there was, but picture this. Picture the city of Lancaster. And you had all these people that came down from, let's, let's use this for an example, all of LA. Let's just say all of LA came down here to whoop up on Lancaster. That's practical right there. Y'all can see that. A lot of people. And all of the Crips and the Bloods and the Brims and all the rest of the family, all of them, they came together to beat up Lancaster. Because Lancaster represented Jesus Christ. Hello. All they wanted to do was worship God. But you got to remember, Jehoshaphat's son, I mean, his dad caused this. Because he got off with the Lord. And the Lord said in the word which we read earlier that there's going to be wars. So he inherited this. But he loved God. Yes, he did. Amen? Amen? Position yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. That means. You know how, uh, you know how uh, who is it, uh, uh, Superman or Batman, and they, they do this? <laughs> Came flying in the wind. I ain't scared of you. Amen. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, who is with you, O Judah, and Jesus and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. So don't panic. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. So that means that they have benefits. Yes? Verse 18, and Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground in all Judea, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. They got the answer. They reverenced him. They humbled themselves, and they gave him thanksgiving for the benefits that the Lord said that he was already going to give. Right. Make sense? Yeah. 19. Then the Levites of the children of, Kor of the Korathites and of the children of the Korathites stood up to praise the Lord. God of Israel with voices loud and high. So that means they weren't playing. They was praising Lord with all their heart and all their mind and all their soul. And God loves that when we do that to him. Okay. Verse 20. So they rose early in the morning and went into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Joseph had stood and said, Hear me, O Jerusalem, and your inhabitants, and you, inhabitants of Jerusalem, and then he said, believe. He said, believe. Tell your neighbor, believe. believe. In the Lord your God, and you shall be established. <laughs> I love that. When you believe, you're established with benefits as you give him thanks. Amen? Amen. Y'all with me? Because this is good stuff. 
and you shall be established. Believe his promise and you shall prosper. Somebody say, I'm prospering in Jesus. Now, here's, here, here, here's where it gets even, even deeper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For his mercy endures forever. How about that? Amen. Shall I stop here? Shall I keep going? Amen. You said wind it up? Oh, no, no, no. Because I'm getting ready. It closes. Amen. I love you, Melody. Okay, verse 22. Now when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judea, and they were defeated. Now here's the interesting thing, too. Verse 23, which is actually the last verse. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them, and when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Syria, they helped destroy one another. <laughs> yeah, we had to get that, or y'all had to hear that. I think y'all still, we need to hear that. Amen. <laughs> Say it again. Verse 23. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Syria, they helped to destroy one another. They turned the swords on each other. And check this out. Remember this? Remember this? I'm standing strong. I'm standing tall. I'm seeing the salvation of the Lord. That's who we are. But yet you got the praisers and the worshipers. They out there. They worship and think of God. I believe there was a, a Shekinah glory that fell in even in that. That's what I believe. It didn't record it, but I believe that took place. Because they all came together. See, that's why we got to come together, y'all. Here we have a, what's that song here? There you go. Does this fit down? Does it? And, 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 and you know, I, I, I've been hearing that song, actually I heard it yesterday too, because you know, I've been playing it over and over. And uh, it's amazing how God blesses you when you get into the word. Because I was studying and I was reading and I was sitting over my word, Brother Will, and I turned and I saw this. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I turned up the song a little bit more. Brother, you asleep. Oh yeah. And so I said, so, and then the Lord said, he said, my people need to hear my word. He said, they need to hear this. They heard the song. They know the song is catchy. It's a good friend. It ain't a lot of words. I should be able to know that by now, huh? If I mess with it, I, trust me, I'll get there. But, but he said, now they need to hear the word of God, my word that matches that song, so they know it's not just words, man. There's power in those words. Amen? Amen. Y'all get anything? Get everything out of this? Yeah. Hallelujah. This is why I can read. But God is good. Oh, and all the time. We appreciate God. We thank him. Amen. I thank my viewers. I'm sure you got something out of this. Amen. Amen. The benefits of Thanksgiving. The benefits of Thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. We give God praise. We give him honor. We give him glory. We worship him. So check this out. So, so when we come in this place, 
When we come in here, y'all, we coming in with worship. We coming in with praise. When we come in to pray, we stir up the atmosphere. Hear me? It's not me. It's the Lord talking now. We stir the atmosphere. Stir up the atmosphere. The Lord says, stir up the atmosphere. Stir up the atmosphere. From your belly, from the depths of your soul, stir up the atmosphere in the name of Jesus. I have given you the tools. I have given you the benefits. I've given you everything that you need to stir the atmosphere. The enemy is trying to stir his atmosphere, but I'm saying to you, stir the atmosphere of the Lord Jesus Christ up in this place in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. God wants us to, 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 to be able to, to be free. You know, he tells us all the time, he says, hey, be free, be free, be free. Be free. The enemy tries to bound us up. When we come in here, we sit and we tight. Some of us, we tight. Listen, listen. Relax, man. You know, if you got a towel, take it off. Relax. 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 We must be free. We must be free. The Lord says that there's so much that he wants to download in us and to share with us. He wants, yeah, he wants, he wants, he wants, he wants, he wants, he wants, is the Kabbalah she share she are with us he wants to share more with us the praise and worship the worship the true worship somebody say the true worship those who worship me must do what amen hallelujah it's another thing. Ace Carrigal, I saw the book of Siki, Ace Casuku, Dela E. Yamana, a Casuku, a Casiki, she outside, she the Abala son of outside, she Casuku, she got people walk, they walk outside all during the service, they pass this place. She has son of Bokosuki. The Lord says, My glory will draw them. Through one accord, through worship, through praise, through the benefits that I've given you of thanksgiving. Healing. In our worship, he says, Healing. I want to give healing. I want miracles to take place. Greater works, he said. Greater works. Greater works. Even us, he says. The house of prayer. The house of prayer. house of work. You will be known by your worship. You will be known by your prayer. I've given you gifts. Use them. Don't sit on the gift. Use the gift that I gave you. You know who you are. You know what the gift is. Use it. Use it.